Did the Baltimore Ravens wait too long to address their pass rushing need? We talk about that and more come up next on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Ravens, or daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens. We're here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. As always, thank you so much for being here today, making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all podcasting platforms. That includes an audio form wherever you get your shows, so Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever, or on YouTube in video form. You can subscribe and follow along like this video as well. Five days a week, plus more of daily Ravens content, news, analysis, updates, and the whole nine yards there. Today's episode of Locked On Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. We are back here with a Thursday edition episode. We did have some Ravens news yesterday on Wednesday, although it wasn't necessarily the, the positive kind is the Ravens lost yet another free agent. And here to talk about that with me, the Ravens pass rushing situation as well. It's Sam and Joku of the Ravens Talk Pod has also covered the Ravens for Sports Illustrated, CBS Baltimore. Very in tune with what's going on right now in Ravens land. Sam, really appreciate you hopping back on here with me. And I know this offseason has been kind of a crazy one for the Ravens, not necessarily in terms of them signing everybody on the face of the earth, but more so losing everybody. On their roster, it seems like, and I think people are freaking out a little bit about the Jadavian Clowney loss, which we'll get into. But how you doing, and, and how have you liked or disliked the Ravens' offseason so far? Uh, it's pretty much been what I expected. I mean, the Ravens had loads of talent, cheap talent, might add, either you know young guys that are slowly coming into their own, or or guys that they got from the street who pretty much blew up under uh, Mike McDonald's uh, tutelage. Um, so I expected this to kind of be the case. Um, especially they got some breathing room with Justin Matibike signing that long extension prior to the start of free agency. Uh, but there are some guys who unfortunately were going to be left by the wayside. And, and you see it with Patrick Queen, Geno Stone, even uh, long stays like uh, Tyler Huntley leaving and going to the AFC North. So uh, not much in the way of surprise, but it's definitely stinging seeing these guys leave the team one by one by one. Yeah, that doesn't make us think any less. I 100% agree with you there. And I think, I don't know if this is just me, Sam, but we, you know, Clowney is one that I think stung a lot of people, including myself. But the one that I've been talking about, it's not Patrick Queen. It's not Geno Stone. I think the one I expected to come back was Ronald Darby. That's the guy who I thought, you know, cheaper two-year deal, which they ended up giving Arthur Millette. But he just he's played so well when Marlon was out. Is is there a guy in particular who has kind of stung you the most in terms of like, man, I really wish Baltimore was able to get that guy back? I'm with you. It was Ronald Darby for sure. And I think the Ravens really understood with the Darby uh, signing uh, that they really needed to get Arthur Millett because uh, both of those guys having those two death pieces were just huge. Millett obviously playing well in certain situations, but Darby stepping in in a magnificent way. Uh, to spell Marlon Humphrey when he was dealing with his injury. Uh, team saw that. You know, they're not the only team in the National Football League. These other GMs are watching, especially a team with the success that the Ravens had. So they're seeing these pieces, and and they're they're grabbing them because they know that they can do well uh, either as a depth piece or a starter uh, for the football team. Right, and now we see Darby was a great outside player for them. Millette obviously played inside in the nickel, the mm -hmm. slot there. So their slot situation, Sam, actually is not that bad. They have Arthur Millette. Darius Washington and Pepe Williams all going to be competing for snaps there. But in terms of a third outside corner, Trey White signed with the Rams a couple of days ago. You maybe to kick the tires on a Stephon Gilmore, one of those types of veteran -y players like Darby was. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget Sam Darby was coming off that ACL injury. He suffered in Denver the previous year. The fact he was able to play like that was really impressive. So they did get one of their two corners back in Darby versus Millette. But now moving to the pass rushing side of things, they've lost one of their pass rushers in Jadavian Clowney. He signs with the Carolina Panthers, a two-year deal worth $20 million. I believe that deal also goes up to $24 million. So at that kind of money, Sam, I am not shocked. The Ravens weren't in on it. Clowney also cited the desire to be closer to home. 
He said he enjoyed his stay with the Ravens, but obviously it can't change location. Baltimore can all of a sudden move to Carolina and be right where he needs him to be. But I don't think it overshadows, Sam, the loss that Jadavian Clowney is. H- how badly do you think this impacts Baltimore's defense, considering he was really good for them last year? Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. Of course, uh, David Ojabo is a guy who could come in and possibly uh, – alleviate some of that pressure but yeah Jadavion Clowney coming in and really performing like the number one overall pick that he uh, uh was when he first came out of college but whew, I know the Ravens wanted to get him I think Jadavion Clowney and the Ravens oftentimes you hear about players saying oh well I wish I could stay there was some genuine interest between the Ravens and Jadavion Clowney to stay but it was all about that money uh, the Ravens didn't have the capital to pay him and Jadavion was really trying to buy this time hoping that uh, through some negotiations with other teams, he could possibly sign back with the Ravens, but it really did come down to the Ravens, Jets, and Panthers. And as you mentioned, closer to home, the Carolina Panthers are, and it's just, you know, the money factor kind of sealed the deal, and now he's a Carolina Panther, to the, much to the chagrin of Ravens fans. Yeah, it d- definitely hurts. And actually, I, I think, Sam, this is the first time that Clowney has signed, maybe, I think it might be ever before training camp starts, yeah. And, but look, hey, if you're getting paid $10 million plus a season, I think he's saying, you know what, I'll come to training camp if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're giving me that contract. So exactly. I, I, I do not blame him one bit. But I think much like you talked about with Millette, you know, they lose Darby, they bring back Millette. I think this only increases just the the need for them to go out there and hopefully re-sign a Kyle Van Noy, who was kind of the, the yin to Jadavian Clowney's yang with the veterans coming in, where Clowney signed, I think it was like three weeks before the season started. Van Noy signed three weeks into the season and still had about mm-hmm. the same amount of sacks as Clowney did. How important is it that they actually bring back a Van Noy? And we'll get to you know a little bit more of who's available outside the organization. But I think Ravens fans were expecting them to re-sign one of the two. It would have been great to get both of them. But I think Van Noy becomes an even bigger priority right now. Yeah, and I think you might see the same situation that you saw with the cornerback room where Darby signed and kind of kicked the tires on the Ravens, pushing to get Arthur Mallette. I think there's Davion Clowney signing – Kind of forces the Ravens to take a closer look at Kyle Vinoy's situation. Kyle Vinoy right now, if you watch him on social media, he's chilling. I mean, he he's a pass rusher. He knows that uh, there's a market out there for him. He's in no rush to sign a uh, sign a contract. I don't think unless it appeases to his liking. He's looking for a certain amount of money, and let's see what the Ravens can do. I don't think Kyle Vinoy is going to uh, demand the type of money that Davion Clowney did, but it might be closer than people think. So definitely look out for that. I expect another one or two year deal. I don't expect them to to throw a lot of years onto that contract if they do wind up signing him. But I agree with you. I think it's kind of, I know it becomes one of those priority signings that they need to do uh, definitely before the draft. Uh, if not, definitely after the draft. But I'm thinking something might happen prior to the start of the year. And the yeah, you, you definitely hope so. And with Baltimore, I think a Van Noy signing would alleviate a lot of the concern within the fan base about just – how young and inexperienced this group is now, because you look at who's on the roster at this time, Sam, right now, it's Adafi Owe, it's David Ajabo, it's Tavius Robinson, and it's Malik Ham. Mm-hmm. It's not necessarily a super inspiring group, considering, look, Adafi Owe, we, we've seen flashes from him. I thought it was pretty solid last season, but he hasn't had that pure breakout yet. David Ajabo, tons of potential, but you can't really put all your eggs in that basket considering the two injuries he's had. And obviously Robinson and Ham, both an experience in their own right. On a scale of 1 to 10, I mean, what's your confidence level in this group right now? Because I think for a lot of fans, it's not very high. Uh, I give it a solid 7.5. I'm not too concerned about the pass rush. I'm more concerned with to see how Zachary Orr, as a first-time DC for this team, mm-hmm. uses those guys. So... We'll see. I mean, again, Jadavion Clowney, Kyle know we mentioned, they came out the street. They didn't really come from having too much success in their former team. So a guy like Mike McDonald came in and really used them well. Zachary Orr can do the same thing with this unit. You might not see them lead the league in sacks, but I'm not 100% concerned yet uh, with this unit. Let's see what they do in the draft and the rest of free agency. You know, it's still early in April. It's I mean, early in March coming into April. So we'll see. It's so crazy to think that free agency really feels like it started two months ago, but we're not only barely a month in, we're not only three weeks in right now, exactly. about two weeks and some change as we record this here. So mm-hmm. still plenty of time. And as we saw with the Van Noy signing in particular, this could go on for months, potentially. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully it's resolved sooner 
but we we're going to see the Ravens try to explore every avenue they can over the next couple of months. And another underrated thing, Sam, is I think that it's not just about the guys who are labeled as edge players or outside linebackers. We've seen Malik Harrison sometimes play on the outside at the Sam position when Tyus Bowser was healthy and with the team he was playing behind Tyus Bowser in mm-hmm. that Sam role. Also Trenton Simpson, who I know is going to be slotting in right now next to next to Roquan Smith, he's replacing Patrick Queen as that next linebacker. He has also played on the edge before, played it, played it in college, and was decently good at it too. So they mm-hmm. have that positional versatility, but I still don't think that should stop them from going out there and at least signing one more guy, if not even drafting another as well. But do you think that they maybe waited a bit too long to look at their pass rush? I mean, obviously things can change and things can happen, but they're were a couple of potential guys from outside the organization they could have looked at who were signed. Maybe they went for Zadarius Smith round three after what happened a couple off seasons ago, or a guy like Leonard Floyd or one of those veteran guys, they were never going to be in the Neil Hunter range or Bryce Huff range. That was never going to be what they could afford. But do you maybe wish they would have jumped on this a bit sooner so that we weren't necessarily sitting here talking about, oh, well, now all these options are gone. We're going to get to it in the second segment. The list of who's still available is not necessarily super pretty right now. Yeah, I mean... It would have been nice, you know, if the Ravens went ahead and got somebody early on. But I think with this signing of Jadavion Van Clowney and really other signings uh, throughout the league from the Ravens so far this free agency period, it seems as though the Ravens' approach is going to be get young, get fast, get talented at these positions. And maybe a veteran or two drops off uh, prior to the start of training camp or maybe, you know, a trade happens during the draft or post-draft. You never know. But the Ravens are really taking the approach of, okay, we're going to attack these holes through the draft and I hope that, you know, some chip falls where you get a Jadavion Clowney or a Kyle Vanoi type of guy that comes in and, and, and does work for them in 2024. And the Ravens have had success with those types of veteran signings. Like you said, it wasn't just a last year thing. Obviously, I think everybody looks to last year because there were so many of them that worked. Yeah. But they have had this history of bringing in these veteran players who are maybe looking for a year to prove themselves again. I mean, there was a lot of discourse around Jadavian Clowney, Sam, before his year last year about, well, is he still a player that can contribute? What is his role going to be? And of course, he now parlays that into a $10 million per year contract. So yeah. the Ravens will find their guys. But I like how you said positions and how they're trying to go young at these because it's not just potentially at edge. We see it with the wide receiver. We see it with the offensive line position. We're seeing it all across the board, and we're going to see if it pays off for him. But coming up in the second part of the show, We will be talking about who is still available from a veteran pass rushing perspective from outside the organization. The list is there. We'll talk about who's on it. Stay tuned. Plenty to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. First, this show is brought to you by Game Time. There have been plenty of frustrating ticket buying experiences in my life. Sometimes I wasn't sure if the seats were good. Other times I couldn't find last minute tickets. Sometimes there are no good deals at all. But you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event because Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With current last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Obviously, in the Baltimore area, Opening day is today. The game hasn't been canceled yet at the time of this recording. Hopefully it stays that way with the weather, but you can get those tickets over on game time and Orioles tickets as well, just in general, plus concerts in the Baltimore area as well. Game time on the app has views from all the seats in the venue, plus game time is only taking the app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the views from your seats before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Plus, they're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on your tickets. With zone deals, you pay the session and game time picks the seats for big time savings. Get the guesswork and I'm buying tickets with the game time down the game time app. Create an account. Use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Turns apply again. Create an account. Redeem code locked on. Spell L O C K D one for $20 off. Download game time's last minute tickets. Lowest price guarantee. We're right back for our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still talking with Sam and Joku of the Ravens Talk podcast. And Sam, we know Kyle Vinoy is kind of the top target in terms of pass rush are still available. Now he is internal since he played with Baltimore last year, but there are still some other guys available from now from outside the organization, but they don't necessarily inspire me personally as much as a guy like Kyle Van Noy would, if he is brought back again, I mentioned some of the players who were initially on the market, but now for those guys, that time is coming gone. So I'm just going to read you off a list of some guys. who I highlighted of who are available right now. And I want you to give your reaction to this list. It's Emmanuel Ogba, Carl Lawson, Randy Gregory, Tyus Bells, our old friend, Jerry Hughes, Justin Houston, another old friend, Bud Dupree, Shaq Lawson, Marcus Golden, Anthony Barr, and Bruce Irvin. 
do any of those guys move a needle for you? Or are you saying at this point, from a free agent perspective, it has to be Cobb and Neuer bust? Uh, well, you know, a guy that does move the needle for me is Tyus Bowser, and he's not coming back. So <laughs> that that guy uh, was also pretty due. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. But those are the guys, the journeyman guys, and they're guys that haven't shown much this last season. But we said the same thing about Jadavion Clowney and Kyle Vinoy last year. So if the Ravens do their due diligence, they see something in these guys, maybe a situational pass rusher, maybe a certain set or defensive alignment that they see that they excel in, something that they might use on more than one occasion throughout the season, this upcoming season, they might bring them in. But none of these guys are going to have me jumping for joy that, oh, yeah, the Ravens pass rush is fixed. It's going to be by the Kyle Vinoy, and some guy in the third or fourth round, maybe even the second round of the draft, or uh, or it's going to be it's tough sledding in 2024. Yeah. If they don't bring anybody else in, they lose Van Noy, they maybe add a guy in the draft. That's enough. That's a very, very young group to go in with. And we don't know what the Ravens' decision on Alafe always fifth year option would be at that point. But, mm-hmm. you know, maybe if it's declined, he has a Patrick Queen type of year, chip on his shoulder type deal, and that helps out. But then what does the money look like there? I mean, for Baltimore, what I will tell you about those guys, Sam, is that they are not going to cost $10 million per season. I think the only guy that would at least sniff that range would be a Van Noy, and we're going to see what his contract looks like. But he did say that, look, he's going to get a raise this offseason and well-deserved based off of how he played. But there are other avenues outside of just the free agent market where Baltimore could attack this thing. I think a trade is another option. They do have nine draft picks to work with here. And we know they're getting a flood of compensatory picks coming in in 2025, with just how many guys they've, if the NFL did not limit compensatory picks to four per team, (laughs) I think they'd be up to like nine right now. It's it's been that type of off season for them. So with all that in mind, I mean, there's a, one particular player that a lot of people have kind of highlighted, and that is from the Eagles, Hassan Reddick, someone who is rumored to maybe be on the trade market for the right price. Really good pass rusher, someone who actually had the Ravens wanting to sign. I wanted them to sign him a couple of years ago before his breakout. I think it was first in Carolina and then moving on to Philadelphia. But would you be willing to part with maybe a second round pick or a third round pick for someone like that, considering the state of the edge position right now for Baltimore? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, yes, <laughs> it's the it's pretty much the answer right now. He's a phenomenal player, and if you can give up a second, I don't think the Ravens will give up a second, but a third round pick, I think, starts to fall within their wheelhouse of possibilities. Maybe not this year, but maybe a third round pick or second round pick in 2025. I can see the Ravens possibly doing something like that, but uh, then you're gonna get this guy a big contract, and the cap situation is not the best right now, so. It's either or. I would say definitely if you can, go for it because he definitely changes the dynamic of your defense, which was already known for being relentless to get into the uh, passer. But again, with your David on Clowney out and possibly Kavanoi joining him soon, that's a guy that you definitely want to take a look at. Yeah, I think, and especially too, this right here right now is the Ravens' window. Lamar Jackson, 27 years old, which is still so crazy to say. It just blows crazy. my mind that he, he is that old. <laughs> I think we've talked about it, Sam. Lamar being 27 and Roquan Smith being 26 are the two craziest age facts I know, and for the complete opposite reason. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ro- Roquan... I feel like he's like 30 years old, 29 mm-hmm. years old. And Lamar, I'm like, wasn't he just like 24 yesterday? Like, yeah. wasn't, wasn't he just 24 years? Where, where'd the time go? He's in year, what, six, right? Seven right now? Yeah. Six right now? Cra- crazy to think about how time has flown by here. But this is Baltimore's window. And with the defense, they've lost some guys, but they have clear needs. And I think a lot of people, Sam, I saw you put a video out on this. Baltimore has a lot of them. You know, they've lost a lot of players. And we know that over time, the Ravens will do their best to fill those holes through free agency of the draft and maybe a trade or two, but that doesn't necessarily discount the fact that you look at this roster right now and it's kind of tough for people to hear right now, but the pure fact, Sam, is that they've lost so many players and not really added a bunch. They're a worse roster right now than they were in 2023. And that's not me trying to hate or me trying to say they're terrible and they're not going to win, but just based off the talent they have added and the talent they have lost, I mean, anybody can look at what it, what it is, what their offseason has been, and say, yeah, they have a lot of knees because they've lost a lot of talent. Yeah, they're definitely not as good as they were last year, and uh, we need that going in. I think that's why that loss in the NFC Championship game was such a devastating one because they had a lot of guys on cheap deals. 
they were performing at a very high level, and those guys are now gone. Patrick Queen, Geno Stone, uh, Jadavion Clowney, as you mentioned, Ronald Darby. So, you know, they, they're going to have to definitely, if not this offseason, it might not all get done in one offseason. You know? It might still be a couple of holes that you don't really want to have, but they're there. Uh, but they need to use these next two offseasons definitely in the draft to infuse talent into this roster again and get cheaper because, you know, Lamar Jackson's cap is only going to get higher. It's going to get more difficult to sign guys off the street. They're going to have to attack this need via the draft for sure. Yeah, and I will give Baltimore credit. They have done a good job of having a bunch of their bigger contracts end when a lot of new ones, those cap hits are starting to climb up. It's kind of how teams have to do things nowadays. Just because Lamar is on this big deal does not mean that they are handicapped to the point they can't sign anyone. But obviously, I think you look back at how the Ravens handled Lamar's rookie contract, and we can certainly say that there might have been a move or two that we would have appreciated, such as adding a wide receiver. But of course, we're not we're not in that era anymore, unfortunately. But again, doesn't mean that they they can't add anybody and they're going to lose every single player. Obviously, they signed Derrick Henry, great million per season, and that is rich considering running back and, and kind of what that whole market is right now. But kind of tying everything together in this segment, Sam, I think that the draft is another key part. I mentioned they have nine draft picks. But there's also the avenue to add a pass rusher in the first round. Now, you mentioned maybe day two or day three. I think it's interesting just where different people are with the Ravens' needs right now because I think the offensive line is still the top priority on this team right now considering they've lost three starters and there's <laughs> there's no going around that. And we know how deep this offensive line class is. So you're thinking, well, what, what why would the Ravens take anything else other than an offensive lineman? But – they have other needs. And if there's a guy like Chop Robinson potentially at 30, would you take a guy like that or are you offensive line all the way? Oh, uh, no, take the best player available. I mean, the good thing about the Ravens is they have uh, Ronnie Stanley firmly planted in that left tackle spot, at least for this season. They can worry about it next season if they absolutely have to. You can get good guards in the middle of the draft, you can get them in the second and third round. If you got a guy like that available at 30, I say pull the trigger. Why not? I mean, you can get these guys. I mean, it's a deep class of offensive linemen, of course. So you don't necessarily have to shoot for the stars at 30 with the old linemen. You can definitely look at the second or third round and still get quality picks. Uh, but yeah, if a guy like that's available at 30, I think you pull the trigger. Don't be surprised that the Ravens deviate from old line, especially if all of these old linemen go off very early in the first round. Like it happens all the time with the wide receivers sometimes. You get a good player like Kyle Hamilton that drops at 14. You, you pull the trigger. So definitely I wouldn't hedge my bet on them picking an old lineman, but 100% old lineman is the top priority. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that Kyle Hamilton pick too, Sam, because one of the stories from that draft is that Baltimore reportedly wanted a wide receiver at pick 14 because they had that Marquise Brown trade lined up, which I think literally no one knew about. I was I was shocked. I'm like, where did this come from? Yeah, no, it was like no one knew it, it this whole time. But – they said, okay, we have this trade lined up. There are a bunch of wide receivers. We're going to go maybe in the top 10, top 15. There's going to definitely be one that falls to us at 14. That's probably what they're saying to themselves. And then like five straight go, like all five go in a span of five picks. And now luckily the Ravens it obviously pushed Kyle Hamilton down. And obviously that was a blessing in disguise. It wasn't really disguised to me at the time. It was a blessing when it happened. But yeah, at sure. the same time, could happen with the offensive linemen where there are seven or eight guys this year who you could consider first round prospects and would maybe go top 20 in different drafts if it wasn't such a deep class. Mm -hmm. But there's a chance there's a run on offensive linemen in the early 20s. And the Ravens, they feel confident enough in a guy like a Chop Robinson or maybe a corner or even a wide receiver potentially to go and draft <laughs> that guy. <laughs> and then you go, is that, are you wide receiver all the way first round? No, I'm actually the opposite. A lot of people think that. Oh, you don't want it. Get. Okay. I don't think the Ravens should touch a wide receiver in the first round unless a stud wide receiver <laughs> seems to fall down. A Marvin Harrison Jr. Maybe they trade up. The Chargers are thinking about trading out of the fifth. I mean, the fifth overall pick. So who knows? Probably not, obviously. But you know, <laughs> those are the type of things that you think about before the start of the draft. But I think the Ravens could deviate away from wide receiver in the first round. But I was a guy who thought that the Ravens should probably not even touch wide receiver in round two or three. But the more I'm hearing from inside the castle. And the more visits that I'm hearing the Ravens are doing for the top 30 with wide receivers, a guy in Texas uh, who ran a 4.21. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, do not be surprised that the Ravens go at wide receiver in round two, and especially seeing that a guy like Josh Reynolds, who I was really high on, the Ravens getting signed elsewhere. Yeah, could still be Michael Gallup in the cards if that's 
still something they're interested in. But with them bringing in both Gallup and Reynolds, I think they clearly have a plan to make, hopefully, I think at least to me, sign a guy and then draft a guy just depends obviously where they would draft that guy. Plus it would be a lot of draft capital invested in the first round at wide receiver during Eric Costa's tenure. Mm-hmm. Obviously we know Marquise Brown in 2019, Rashad Bateman in 2021 and Zay Flowers in 2023. So four out of six drafts would be first round wide receivers from Eric Costa. Yeah. So I think for some people, you know, it's just, hey, let's go out there. And plus you get the fifth year option on these guys too, especially with offensive linemen and any position, honestly, which is it's changed a little bit over the years, but it's still yes. very valuable as well. Coming up though, we're going to be talking about general news and notes, talking about Baltimore's offseason as a whole and getting a little bit more into John Harbaugh's comments from the NFL owners meetings. Stay tuned. Plenty to get into on Locked on Ravens. First, the show was brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel has a bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. I have Connecticut winning it all, UConn. So hopefully the Huskies can come through for me this year. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on a bet on college hoops until they get down the nuts. We return with Locked On Ravens, our final segment with Sam and Joku. I am Kevin Ostriker. And Sam, I do want to, I never, I haven't had a chance to ask you about the Derrick Henry signing yet. I kind of mentioned it here and there, but was that a move you were a fan of? Is that a move to you that moves the needle? Some people I think are very on board. Other people are more so, well, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins were fine. Why just spend this money on a wide, on a wide receiver, on a running back? Where, where are you with the whole thing? I am all in on a Derrick Henry signing. I think it's going to be a magnificent turn of events. It's one of the reasons why I'm really hesitant for the Ravens to go out and get a wide receiver because I think even if they feel that this team right now, even with Nelson Aguilar likely being the third guy and Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers being the one and two, um, this team is loaded at offense, in my opinion. I think defenses have to decide whether or not they're going to put eight guys in the box even if they do put eight guys in the box, are you going to have a DB be one of those eight guys? Are you really going all big to stop Derrick Henry? I mean, whatever you decide, they're going to have a counter to it now with Derrick Henry being really the thunder and Lamar being the lightning. So I am 100% on board with this. I'm very excited for September to come around and let's see this offense in action. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting too, especially as we start to fill in the pieces on the offensive line with who's going to be starting if they draft a plug and play tackle. We're obviously going to see guys like Ben Cleveland and Andrew Voorhees and and Salah, all these guys in the competitions for it. But I think Henry's just such a needle mover because I kind of said like yin and yang for Clowney and Van Noy. Well, Lamar and Derrick Henry to me, that's that's a yin and yang right there because it's like what Mm -hmm. personnel do you put on the field? If you put in heavy personnel, well, Lamar Jackson just beats you to the edge and beats you one-on-one. But if you put in the lighter personnel to try to stop Lamar, well, we know Derrick Henry can bowl those guys over. So exactly. I, I just think it's it's a match made in heaven. And I understand, oh, Pan a running back $8 million and he's 30 years old. But Derrick Henry, while he's not like 2019 Offensive Player of the Year as Derrick Henry, he's still a top five running back in this league. And I think exactly. a lot of people, you know, they, they see that, the, that number, that 30 number for a running back and they say, okay, he's done. He's washed. He can't play anymore. Uh, Derek Henry made it very clear that he still has a lot left in the tank. <laughs> uh-huh. And look, I, I, I believe him 100%, especially because he's gotten faster over the course of the past couple of seasons. Yeah, he's uh, definitely a guy who's – I'm not really worried about his age at all. And you mentioned that he's not the same guy he was in 2019, but he's still a top five back. If he was the guy he was in 2019, it wouldn't be an $8 million contract. Let me tell you, he'll be getting way more than that, maybe double. So – uh, fancy relax, eight millions. Although it sounds like a lot, it really isn't in the grand scheme of things, especially with what the Ravens have planned for him to do in 2024 and beyond. Yeah, you know, I think it's also you put in perspective that Tony Pollard got around eight million per season, DeAndre yeah. Swift got around eight million per season. You, you line those three guys up and say, Hey, who do you want on your team? It's Derrick Henry a hundred times out of a hundred. I mean, it's, right. it's not particularly close. The Ravens weren't going to get a guy either. The, Saquon Barkley probably was the only other guy. The Ravens might have tried to bring in, but other than that, the Ravens aren't really looking at any other running backs. It was Derrick Henry all the way, and it's one of those few times where the Ravens were actually honest with the fan base when they said, yeah. "Hey, he was number one on our our, our board. He, he's the guy that we wanted from day one, even thinking back to last season." And they finally got it done. So shout out to Eric DeCosta for actually doing that. So. Right, and you know, two-year deal. Saquon got you know three for right around thirteen million per season, thirteen point mm-hmm. seven. Josh Jacobs got four for around twelve million per season. 
but I think it's a great deal, especially, and it works within what Baltimore could work with. I, I think that's the biggest part too, where you're, you're getting a top five back for probably top 10, top 12 back money, which I think mm-hmm. is really important to just what salary cap space they're working with here. But we also have heard a little bit, Sam, about the Ravens plan at wide receiver. You mentioned Josh Reynolds. He goes to the Denver Broncos on a deal worth about $7 million per season, it's up to $14 million over two years. They brought in Michael Gallup as well, but it really seems like, especially based off of John Harbaugh's comments, that they are trying to just give these young guys a chance, including Rashad Bateman. It feels like they believe in him as the number two wide receiver this year behind Zay Flowers. Now, I think a lot of people still have a bad taste in their mouth from when they did this last time in 2022, but I will argue this is a bit of a different situation. They essentially gave Rashad Bateman that number one role with him having missed the back half of training camp and almost a third of the season before coming in, and they didn't really give him any veteran help at all. And it just felt like they said, all right, Rashad Bateman is the one, Devin Duvernay is the two, everybody's got to prove it. Then they brought in Sammy Watkins and said, all right, here you go. Well, this time, Zay Flowers has proven he has that wide receiver one potential. And I think Bateman in a role where he doesn't necessarily have to look over his shoulder and say, hey, is Odell the number two or am I the number two? Who, who's the clear option? It feels like they want to bring in a wide receiver, at least a veteran, that will complement Bateman, not necessarily take away from his snaps. That is a beautiful way to put it because that's exactly what it is. Odell Beckham was brought in, and he, look, he did a great job. He mentored Zay Flowers. He was a great leader for Rashad Bateman, but he definitely took away targets from Rashad Bateman because those guys are – one in the same. They're two sides of the same coin. So definitely lay down in the season, you saw a lot of Odell Beckham targets. And really, whenever Odell Beckham made a play, Rashad Bateman was in the sideline. Whenever Rashad Bateman made a play, Odell Beckham was in the sidelines because those two were doing the same things very well. And you can only have uh, one ball for one guy. So uh, Odell Beckham leaving will definitely give Rashad Bateman a lot more opportunities to shine. And I think the Ravens made a point to say at the end of the year press conference that they're really going to focusing on getting Rashad Bateman more targets. And this is the year to do it because if he doesn't prove it this year and they don't give him a fifth-year option, he's off to free agency. Yep, I've said it too. This is the make-or-break year for Rashad Bateman and Lamar Jackson in terms of that connection. And we just haven't seen them be on the same page. We've seen the film. We've seen the clips of Rashad Bateman getting open and Lamar and him just not being on that same page. We've also seen a couple of bad drops. You know, I'm not, I'm not blaming one or the other anymore, but I just think that you know, hopefully with a full off season and hopefully a full season, you know, Bateman has missed time with injuries. I think it's thrown off some of the timing. It has the potential to be really good, but we also, and speaking of injuries, we got word a couple days ago that JK Dobbins is officially cleared for football activities. Now, personally, Sam, I think that ship has sailed. I think with Derrick Henry coming in and plus if JK is looking for a one year prove it deal, he's not going to get a lot of opportunities in Baltimore considering that gone are the days of the committee. Now Derrick Henry is your bell cow back and that's how it should be. Get him all the touches he needs. But he visited the chargers yesterday and, and Joe Hortiz, Jim Harbaugh building up a nice little LA Ravens squad over there. If, if oh, Derrick yeah. Henry, you know, Henry is a guy for Baltimore. Well, Gus Edwards goes on to Los Angeles. Maybe Dobbins joins them. Bradley Bozeman goes, Hayden Hurst goes, do you like that squad? They're building up a bunch of former, you know, we talk about the New York Ravens with the Jets and the Giants, but it seems like the Chargers are the next team to t- try to steal all these Ravens players. I like the Chargers. I like what they're doing. My only shot on them would be they have Greg Roman as the OC. So <laughs> who knows what they're going to do? Bring in the guy like J.K. Dobbins will help them for sure, but it's going to hurt Justin Herbert, I think. I mean, this might be the year for Greg Roman to prove that it wasn't his fault that the Ravens weren't as successful in the passing game. But, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of J.K. Dobbins. He's a dog. I think that if he's fully recovered from that tear, he's going to make a team very happy. I think the Chargers are going to take a good look at him. Uh, but, yeah, he's not coming back to Baltimore. He's, he he wants to do the Patrick Queen. He wants to prove the Ravens wrong. He wants to prove to the, hey, you should have brought me in. And uh, wherever he goes, I think he's going to do very well. But, yeah, there's no shot he comes back to Baltimore. It, it, it'll be too, too much of a shot into his pride if he came back. And, of course, the Ravens are moving on with uh, Derrick Henry. Yeah, I just I don't think it really would work out both ways. But I think out of all the ones you talked about at the beginning of the show, which one stung the most right now, obviously, it's Darby. But I think if we see JK go out there on ball, obviously, I'm going to be super happy for him. But it's going to be a man what could have been in this Ravens offense fully healthy because we know who JK Dobbins is when he's healthy. But that's been Mm -hmm. the question. Can he be healthy? That's the asterisk next to his name. But Sam, before I get you out of here, I do want to ask you just about your overall 
180 view, I guess 360 view about the state of the Ravens and just where you feel like they are right now. Are you worried? Are you just calm and just chilling out and saying, you know what? We've seen this dance before. They sign guys when they sign guys. Where, where do you kind of view this team in your light right now? I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of chilling. You know, the Ravens have their core. You know, they have John Harbaugh, they have Lamar Jackson, they have Eric DaCosta, and they have Steve Bashotti. Those are the four pillars of the organization. And those guys are strong, best in their craft. So as long as those four guys are there and stable, I'm not too concerned. I'm more concerned really with Zachary Orr's development as a DC, his first time as a defensive coordinator. How can he fill in the shoes left by the genius Mike McDonald, who moves on to Seattle? Uh, I think the draft is going to be their bread and butter. I think Eric DaCosta is going to have to pull another A++ draft um, to, to really fill in the gaps left by these uh, premier players that left via free agency. Uh, they don't need to be the same team they were last year. They don't need to be as great. But if they're even a little bit close, you know, to being that team that they were last year, uh, they'll be fine. I'm, I'm not too concerned yet. But the draft will be a very interesting uh, three days to see what this team does to replenish their roster. Yeah, I lied to you. I have one more question. You mentioned John Horrible, and I put out a tweet about a week or two ago, and you responded to it. I saw and I saw because you kept getting responses back to you. Man. For those who don't know, the question was, what's a Ravens take that has you like this? And the picture was everybody sitting around and then the guy saying, you're all wrong. So obviously a, an opportunity for people to air out their controversial opinions. And Sam said that John Harbaugh is, if I'm not mistaken, is the best coach not named Andy Reid. And exactly. I want you, because I know you've talked about it as well on, on other platforms and obviously your show, but I, I want to kind of get your opinion on that. I, I'm I want to see what your mindset is because I think a lot of people right now aren't particularly happy with John Harbaugh after the way the AFC Championship ends. And obviously, this is what it'd be known for me now lately, league. And what the Ravens have done lately is losing the AFC Championship game. Yeah. Uh, and it's 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 very hard to argue with the fact that the Ravens uh, definitely dropped the ball in the AFC Championship game. If you ask me who's the better team, the Chiefs or the Ravens, it's clearly the Ravens by a mile. So that's a knock on John Harbaugh's resume for sure. But it's only a notch. I mean, this guy has been in the league for 16 years and uh, as a head coach in all 16 years, he's been the head coach at the bottom of Ravens, the second longest tenure head coach in the NFL currently not named Mike Tomlin, who's at 17 years, just a year up on, on John Harbaugh. So that in itself speaks to me of being a very strong head coach. He's head coach of the year in 2019 nominated for the award this year. He has a top five winning record among head coaches 10th or 20th, I believe, depending on not well, 20th all time among active and inactive coaches as far as wins total. So this guy is a is a beast of a head coach. Now he does have his shortcomings. His shot clock, I mean, his clock management isn't the best. You know, his situational awareness has been criticized at certain points sometimes. I mean, he goes for it on fourth down and he makes it, he's the hero. You don't make it, you're the villain. So I mean, it's 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 what like you mentioned, it's a what have you done for me lately uh, type of league, and of course fans are going to be upset with Harbaugh, but you can do a lot worse than Harbaugh, but I don't think you can do a lot better. I, I really don't. I think that Harbaugh is definitely number two in the league, and, and there may be a couple of guys in the NFC, you know, Sean McVay, you know, in the AFC that you know that comes to mind. But man, for my money is John Harbaugh and Andy Reid, and that's it. Yeah, to me, it's it's. He's not – I think a lot of people say, oh, he's the worst coach in the league. This, that, the other. No, John Harbaugh is a good coach. The issue is that, you know, sometimes for people it's, oh, well, when does the tenure run out? You know, are you settling for this, settling for that? But if you do fire a guy like John Harbaugh, you have to be sure that you get a guy in there that is either at his caliber or better, and that's not necessarily super easy to find. Plus, there's no guarantee that the next coach the Ravens bring in is to that caliber. So big year for John Harbaugh coming up, though. I think a lot of people understand that – you know, if the Ravens can't live up to expectations, there could be conversations about what comes next for this team. But for Baltimore right now, they're still looking to fill out their roster. Obviously, Eric DeCosta, John Harbaugh, even Lamar Jackson, they all have says in what all goes on. Ravens and John Harbaugh revealing that Lamar Jackson gave John Harbaugh a list of some receivers, which, which he did last year, by the way. And on that list was Mr. Zay Flowers from South Florida. Big, He's a big South Florida guy, Sam. We know yeah. that. So. <laughs> He's someone I think Tank Dell was also on that list, and obviously he mm -hmm. balled out for, for Houston this past year. But Sam, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for hopping on with me. Please tell people where they can find you and what you're working on. We're less than a month away from the draft, which is kind of crazy to think about. 
Yeah, it is nuts. Yeah. Well, you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever on uh, Ravens Talk Pod. You can find me on YouTube, Ravens Talk Podcast, and also on Instagram where I'm uh, mainly located at Ravens Talk Podcast. Uh, we're talking about the draft. The draft is coming up, so we're going to have guys on the show, including you, hopefully, uh, very soon to talk all about the draft and and get ready because I know this is offseason is going to be really set in the stone for what could happen. As you mentioned, the windows closing, they get the windows there, though. Wide open for the Ravens to make a run for a championship. I think they'll be right in the thick of it again. Uh, but it starts now and, and continues on to the draft. It absolutely does. And the link to Sam's work all will be in the description down below. So be sure to check him out. His great work on his podcast. You, you do not want to miss what he has coming up about the NFL draft. And obviously, Ravens content as well. Sam, I appreciate you again. Thank you so much for hopping on. And thank you for listening, watching today on Locked on Ravens. Be sure to subscribe, follow along, video form, audio form. The whole nine yards coming up tomorrow, of course. We're going to be rounding out the week with more Ravens content. Stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.